Hello, I'm Parvin Asimzadeh. I'm a senior software engineer at Amazon. And in this talk, I'll be talking about the role of prompt engineering in ethical AI and how we can mitigate bias and reduce hallucinations in AI systems. So here is the agenda for today's talk. We'll start with a brief introduction to LLMs and ethical AI. Then I'll explain the main challenges we face in this area, bias and hallucination in AI systems and we'll then discuss about the methods to address these challenges and I'll wrap up with some key takeaways. Let's start with the definition of large language models. And I thought it's better to ask the definition of one of the LLM to see how they define itself. So here I used, so basically it says LLM is the type of AI model designed to understand and generate human-like text. And these models are trained on vast amount of data, which enables them to predict and produce response based on the inputs they receive. So a few keywords here are important to note and remember. Generate human-like text and the trained on vast amount of data. So just let's keep these two phrases in mind and we'll come back to this to understand how it impacts the outcome of the LMs. In general, the LMs are powerful tools, but their response depends on the data they have trained on, which can lead to issues we'll discuss shortly. So let's discuss a bit about the background. So the transformer architecture is the backbone of the large language models, which allows AI to learn language patterns and generate text. So in 2017, Google researchers introduced the first transformer model, which is uh, described in the uh, paper uh, attention is a unique paper which I uh, added here, which laid the groundwork for the modern LLMs. So before transformers, models relied on the sequence, like a processing text word by word. However, with transformers, it scans transformers. It look at the entire sentence and to understand the context better. Here, the model uses a special technique called self-attention, which allows to look at the all the words in the sentence at once to understand the context and understand the relationship between the words to predict the next word. After this transformer model, OpenAI created its first generative pre-trained transformer model in 2018 and 2020 they created the GPT-3 model, which is one of the largest language model created uh, for now and it has 175 billion parameters. And after that, so like um, many other models with billions, even trillions of parameters created by different companies. And the main thing to remember here is that like, all these models are trained using the data from like the public source, from books, from websites, Wikipedia, and you've, like public forms like the Reddit. And let's keep in mind that like uh, these are the not the accurate source of the information, so it might have some misinformation, some bias within the data, which could impact the outcome of the LMs, which we will discuss uh, shortly in the upcoming slides. So now let's talk about a bit on the ethical part of the AI. So what do we mean by the ethical AI? It's mainly about like developing an AI stems that align with the core ethical principles and values, such as fairness, transparency, accountability, privacy, safety, and inclusivity. In short, ethical AI systems should treat everyone fairly, because of their race, age, gender, or any other characteristics. They should also make their process clear, keep personal data secure and safe, and respect the diverse perspectives. So the two key issues uh, we are f facing with ethical AI are bias and hallucination which I will go into the FS in the next slide. So let's start with the bias. So bias in AI mainly refers to the systematic errors that cause certain groups or individuals to be treated unfairly by the model. So for example, if, let's think about the example, probably, if the face recognition application has been trained on a lighter skinner uh, individual, it may not accurately identify the darker uh, skin tones. So which can lead to the error rates for certain certain groups. So this like a bias can come from a multiple sources. And the training data is this 
is the main source, as we discussed before today, all these methods are trained using the, uh, the information from the publishers, and this could impact the bias on, on the output of the AIs. So this, like the data might be imbalanced, so the model design could have some limitations, so just feature selection is also important, explaining some features could impact the AI's decision. Labeling might also be subjective here, so if the annotators who manually label some training data have some bias on specific topics, might also impact the decision of the AI. And also like the, even the biased input from the users could also impact the final output. So if this data is used for retraining the models. And also the ethical impact of the bias is significant. So it can lead to the unfair treatment of certain groups and ultimately people lose trust in AI systems. And for the hallucination, so this is the mainly commonly common term used in AI world when the model generates incorrect or fabricated information. So this can also happen for several reasons. So similar to the bias, so training data, it is also plays a huge role here. So low quality data also has some AI models to hallucinate, to provide a fabricated and misinformation. So lack of sufficient context also pass the info issues here. Or a complex language inputs sarcasm, like a cultural references, could be difficult for AI models to understand, and in that case, AI models would just fill the gaps with some fabricated information. And uh, also, this can also lead to the misinformation and reduce reliability in AI systems, which is, which is why it's important to address all these issues. Let's see w what methods can be used to mitigate the bias. Here are the few strategies so listed uh, below. As we discuss this, as this source of the issues is coming from the training data, they're using diverse training data sets that cover the range of demographics is key starting point here. So for example, so if you are building an assistant, like AI assistant, to answer medical questions, we should use a data set that reflects diverse patients, like uh, demographics and conditions to avoid like a bias recommendation from the AI side. So another method is fine tuning and the biasing where we retrain model uh, with specific data that helps to reduce the bias. So doing some bias audits and transparency about how these algorithms function are also important. And finally, updating the models regularly, keeping them aligned with social norms would help to minimize the bias. And similar to the bias, in order to reduce hallucinations, using high quality training data is important. So the more accurate the data, the better the model's output it is. So contextual training is another approach that we can use to reduce the hallucination here. So where we provide the model with additional background information for specific tasks. For example, if we train the customer service chatbot on domain-specific language, this will give more relevant answers. So fine-tuning the pre-trained models on this focus data set also increase the uh, reliability of the system. For example, I guess AI system designed for the medical advice should be fine-tuned on the verified healthcare data to have a relative output. So integrating with the external Knowledge sources like a databases can help verify the facts and provide additional context and help to reduce the hallucination. And also continuous learning is important, which allows the model to keep improving based on the user interaction here. So all the previous methods we discussed for both minimizing the bias and reducing hallucinations is not scalable and cost efficient as they require retraining, fine tuning, which are a costly operation. So now we'll discuss a few prompt engineering methods, which will be easy and quick to implement and try. We'll discuss zero shot and few shot learning, chain of thought, and the modeler reasoning, knowledge, and language, in short, miracle framework. So let's start with the zero shot and few shot learning. So mainly zero shot and few shot learning or methods are useful in areas where we don't have the relative labeled data. 
And zero shot means it allows the model to apply its existing knowledge to a new test without any specific example. So it relies on the training data. Over in the future learning, we give model a few additional examples, helping it to understand what we expect. For example, if we are building an ex M2, let's say, plus way image, we can sh show like a, show it a few examples, which will add up more effectively. Here, in the, actually, in this screenshot shown here, shows the three examples, zero shot, like a, which doesn't provide any examples, or one shot, which provides a single additional example, and a few shot, which provides multiple examples, that shows the translation of word from uh, English to French. And in the one shot, it provides a single example to show how, what the translation of word from English to French, and the few shot provides multiple examples which increase the accuracy of the result of the AI system. Another method is the chain of thought approach. So this is the one from the paper created by the Google research team, and uh, this will have the link here. This helps the method to think step by step and break down the complex problems by reasoning through uh, like each step. So instead of jumping directly to the answer, so I just will ask the model to think step by step. This is the screenshot, this is the example from the paper itself. Actually, this is a good example that shows the combination of one-shot example and the chain of the task. So in each, uh, like in the standard prompting and the chain of the task prompting, so it provides an additional example before asking the example to the model itself. So in the first one, it provides the uh, one example with math problem, and in the answer part, it just directly provides the answer. However, when it asks a new math problem, we just couldn't uh, find the answer correctly. In the second one, the chain of time problem, prompting part, so it provides the math, same math problem, but in the answer, so it just gives a, like a step-by-step -step explanation, more explain the reasoning of the answer here, which helps the model to respond correctly. So in, the, in that case, so it's able to correctly find the math answer of the math problem. And the last method is a miracle framework created by the AI21 labs. Basically, it suggests to enhance the capabilities of language models by integrating with external tools and knowledge sources. So some examples are like using it for integrating with the additional source to, to check the weather, if the real time weather, or it, for the financial Applications may be integrating with the financial source to check the real-time stock prices. Would be a good example here. And in this screenshot below, actually it shows also like another use case for the math problems. So which is able to find the answers for the simple math problems, but struggles to calculate the complex math problems. So the calculator tool, the calculator application is another good use case here. So basically it just integrates with the calculator application and parse the user inputs and pass the parameters to the miracle framework like uh, through the uh, APS, which calculates and uh, responds back to the correct, res uh, correct uh, result for the math problems. So just to wrap up, here are the uh, key points to remember as part of this presentation. So ethical AI is important for creating systems that are fair, transparent, and accountable. So we should also remember that prompt engineering is a powerful tool to address issues of bias and hallucinations, which makes the AI system more reliable and transparent. It's also important to remember that ethical AI is a continuous journey, so we need to continuously evaluate, update, and, uh, and take the diverse perspectives into account in order to tackle the new ethical challenges here. And finally, organizations must commit to ethical practices in AI development to ensure technology benefits society. So here are the list of references I use here throughout the slides. And thank you for listening. Please feel free to connect me on LinkedIn for further discussion and questions.